The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up, Jeff Little shows us the way to win by focusing on the things that matter most. I just want to encourage us today, write that note, you know, send that, send that text, invest in that child. You know, the world is, we've now with social media and so many things, there's so many things competing for our attention. And, and I, I, want, I want to just encourage people, live for the scoreboard that's going to matter. Welcome to Life Today. I'm Randy Robinson. Sheila Walsh is with me. Hey, everyone. And we are going to have fun today. We're going to talk about the way to win. And I don't know anybody that says, you know, in the morning, I think I'll be a loser today. Right? <laughs> right? We want to win, right? Well, Jeff Little is our guest. He's a pastor of a Milestone Church here in the Fort Worth area, multi campus church, a longtime friend of the ministry. And we're glad to have him. I think he's going to bless you. Jeff, great to have you, man. It's great to be here. I loved your church. I had the privilege of coming and speaking to your women. And there's just, sometimes you can just tell when you walk into um, a particular group of people that it's a healthy, vibrant, growing, compassionate. I remember saying to my husband on the way home, I feel like I could tell anybody in the worst days or the best days of their life, you could show up there and you'd be welcomed. Is that intentional as a church? Well, thank you so much for that, Sheila. They uh, the, the ladies loved you. And uh, of course, uh, I think intentionality is important, but I think it's also just the sincerity of the people. I'm, yeah. I'm humbled by the people that I get to pastor because as a pastor, you can have all the intentional plans in the world, <laughs> but true. I just feel so honored that the people really are genuinely sincere, really love God and, and really love people. And you can't replace that. When people come into an atmosphere and it feels sincere and home-like, mm -hmm. it's, it's sometimes a, a surprise in our culture today that yeah. you go into anywhere and it's just sincere. And yeah, and yeah so that's, that's an amazing thing. But you started really small. I was wondering <laughs> about the history of Milestone. Yeah, well, I, I started as a senior pastor at 21. So um, <laughs> I graduated from Baylor University and found myself the pastor of this small church. Um, I, I, I'd like to say I wasn't necessarily a good pastor, but I was <laughs> a pastor at 21. There were people there thinking, I don't know if we can follow you. And I thought, I don't know if I would follow me. But uh, I, uh, I started as a, as a pastor young, but uh, around 28 years old, I, I felt a call to the area that I pastor and 32 people moved with me, some recent college graduates. and. Again, I'm humbled by it. People sold their homes and we started in a school cafetorium <laughs> and uh, then a leased building. And of course we have nicer facilities now, but you, you learn along the way, it's, it's not the building, it's not the programs, it's many times not the preaching, it's, it's the atmosphere of the people and the sincerity of you, it. You guys actually moved into an old grocery store that the church yeah. that I was a part of yes. had converted from a grocery store to a church. And yeah. then when we got a building, you guys moved in there and the roof leaked. I know that. That's true. <laughs> I, I was preaching one Saturday night and it started leaking, so it just kind of right kept going. Right yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's get to the, the way to win. Yeah. Uh, kind of what, what is your sort of foundation here? What are you trying to communicate? Well, the thought is that I think every person, you know, there's no one watching that doesn't look for a scoreboard in life. We, we look many times to maybe our bank account or we look to career or maybe how our family's doing. And that's, that's why a lot of times when we hit challenges in life and what we're looking to as our scoreboard, it, it becomes really challenging. I mean, you can, you can really walk through a, a real struggle when you have the wrong scoreboard. And, and I like to say that really the greatest tragedy in life is not to have a scoreboard with no score on it even, because there's a lot of people who be like, I'd like to see a few more points <laughs> on the scoreboard. But to have a scoreboard that you score a lot of points only to realize you were playing the wrong game. Mm -hmm. and, and I think our world pulls at us and even our own thought about what winning is two things a lot of times, and I know there's probably some people watching that maybe have 
had a little more experience in life, you know. Now I'm 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 not as old as some, but I'm kind of getting <laughs> to that mid stage. Just married off a daughter <laughs> in in November. My oldest daughter. I mean, I I cried so much at the rehearsal dinner. I had no tears to cry at the wedding. You know, I mean, we were hoping she would marry our son, but we we're not bitter. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you go through a few life events. And you realize, you know, a lot of things I focused on yeah. may not really be winning in, in life. What, what are some of the things you think we should be focusing on to score in the right column? Well, I, I wrote the book for every, I believe every person. I mean, Paul even says we're all running a race. Mm -hmm. And he says, you, you can run it to win no matter where you come from, whatever circumstance you've had, even if you've gone through a really difficult time, Paul says to us, you can run your race, not someone else's race, mm -hmm. and you can run it to win. So I, I wrote the book to really, it's short chapters, just, just short thoughts, and, and maybe a daily thing you could do or, or, or weekly and grab something, and it's, it's a little more thought-provoking about winning. One, one of the areas is I find we have a lot of people who want to learn the Bible today. Mm -hmm. And and we as pastors, we we want them to learn the Bible because that's where you're going to find God's perspective on your life. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of times people are intimidated by it. Mm -hmm. where, where do I get started? How do I, or even if you've read it for a while, wanting to know how it works. So I have a section, I kind of call it the cliff notes on the Bible to, to give you the key nuggets. Um, and probably the, the largest area is, I, I like to say it this way, your legacy is your scoreboard in reverse. Mm -hmm. It's never too late to start thinking about the legacy you're going to leave behind. Yeah. We all know the older you get, you know, people tell you, it's, it's here today, gone, you know, it goes by fast. And you try to tell young people, man, you're going to miss this. The, the, right. <laughs> you know, right. it's, like, it's like those little kids are going to grow up and get <laughs> married and, and you're going to look up one day and, and life has really passed you by. And, and, and I think um, there, there's, there's an encouragement through this process to really, no matter where you're at, you, you can start today and, and, and you can start leaving behind something that'll, that'll really matter. As a wife and a mom of a son who's 25, the way the book hit me, because initially I thought, well, this is really speaking to men, but as a mom and a wife, it spoke to me about sometimes the men in our lives, they're not finding the help in the areas that they really are longing yes. to be touched. Yes. And this is part of your doctoral work, isn't it? Yes, yes. And I, I have... I, I did the last three years actually doing empirical research. And so for me, you know, sometimes as a pastor, you say, I, I think this, or I have a theory, I actually have real research that um, there's, there's really a longing and a need there to say, I want to win, but no one's ever taught me how. I, I don't even know what to focus on. I don't, I don't even know how to get started. I mean, we, we learn how to do things in our career. We learn how to get the trophies that somebody will sell in a garage sale one day, quite honestly, <laughs> you know? We learn how to do those things because we spend time with people who help us learn how to do it. And, and really as a pastor, I see myself as a coach in life. It's like, let me give you some stuff that really matters. Let me let me talk to you about what really matters. I, I'm I'm a bit of a life expert as a pastor because I'm around people. Not that I always hit the target myself, but I'm around it. And I always love to tell people I've I've said it so many bedsides when it's all over. Yeah. And you know what they're not talking about? Their 401k. Right. What they're not talking about is their trophies. Well, they're not even overanalyzing some of the bumps along the way. They're thinking about people. Mm -hmm. I, I sat with my dad in 2019. He, he, was, he was my hero and um, I had a surgery that, that was challenged and, 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 I, and I sat with him. So now I wasn't the pastor, I was the son. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how old your parents are when you, yeah. when you go through that moment, it's like life just flashes before you. And I was so thankful that I had a father that, that invested and poured. No one will really ever know a lot about him. He was a small town in East Texas and he was an engineer and he, he taught me how to prioritize the word. And my mom was a praying mom. And so I didn't really have a chance. <laughs> 
If you have a, I mean, uh, aren't we thankful for all yes. the moms and grandmas that prayed us <laughs> right. into the kingdom of God? I mean, you don't have yeah. a chance. You can try to run if there's somebody watching <laughs> and you're running from God. If your grandma's praying, God's after you. He's going to get you. But um, I, I just want to encourage us today, write that note, you know, send that, send that text, invest in that child. You know, the world is... We've now with social media and so many things, there's so many things competing for our attention. And, and I, I want I want to just encourage people live for the scoreboard that's going to matter. And I, I like to say to people, sometimes as a coach, they give you permission. And I'm like, I just want to give somebody permission today. Prioritize what really matters. Yeah. So I'm curious about that because you, you you sort of downplay your parents' impact, you know, not high profile, not um, what the world would celebrate as, you know, celebrities or, you know, great wealthy individuals. There's a different economy going on here. There's a different scoreboard you are talking mm -hmm. about. What is it about your parents that in your mind, and I think in God's mind, places them above a lot of people that we would celebrate as great, but who are not spiritually minded. Yeah. What are those qualities? So my dad was an engineer, so he taught me the strategic side of my personality. My mom was an intercessor, you know. <laughs> 12 years old, I had an encounter with Christ where after getting saved, I was in my bedroom and I felt like he said, I'm calling you to ministry. I didn't really know what that meant, you know, and I'm just a small kid there in East Texas, I walked out into our family room. I had crocodile tears. I said, mom, dad, I think I'm called the ministry. My mom said, thank you, Jesus. I knew it. My dad said, sit down, boy, we're going to diagram this for a minute and figure out how you're going to pay your bills. But, um, I, I did, I, I lived in an atmosphere that, that, that sought to prioritize things that matter. And my dad had a surgery that, that, that went wrong. And, and so he, he went through a, a, a health crisis over a period and actually interviewed him because his health was failing. And, and I, I had the honor to, to just honor him one last time and do his funeral. And he spoke at his own funeral <laughs> and he said, someone else is going to drive your car. Someone else is going to live in your house. But what really matters in this world is, is what you leave behind in the areas of the people that you love the most. Yeah. So I, I, I just want to encourage, there's, there's no one listening to me that can't leave a deposit and a legacy. That's why we've been honored to support, you know, what I just love James and Betty and, and, and you guys over the years because of the investment that's made in the lives of people that, we may never meet, mm -hmm. but we're, we're leaving a legacy. Mm -hmm. when, when you invest in children and feeding programs and water wells, you're investing yeah. in a legacy, Absolutely. in a future, in people that you may never meet. And then we have a chance today. That, that's what I love about Jesus. You know, his, his mercies are new every day. Like today, mm -hmm. no matter how bad it's been, we can invest yeah. in something that'll matter tomorrow. You know, I've been thinking about just the way our culture is going at the moment, and mm -hmm. it's very distressing, very, yeah. and I think of, like, people the age of my son, you yes. know, mid-twenties, maybe graduated from college, and they look out at the world, and they look out, even at times at the church, Yes. and some have kind of drifted off. Yes. What do you say to that, Jeff? I gathered some young people in our in our city, and the, I asked the principal, could I just have the library, and I gathered kids that I've never never met and I just sat down with them as a pastor and said tell me about tell me about your life and I have to tell you I, I learned a lot that day they were crying and I was crying and, wow. and 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 it is a different pressure that they live with you know when I went to school you may have some challenges but when you went home you went outside and played with a stick or made a fort or something but now all those pressures come a lot of times into their lives and I know I know there are people watching that are concerned about a grandchild or maybe have a prodigal mm -hmm. uh, I preached not too long ago on the story of the prodigal son and we're all praying if we have somebody like that that they would come to their senses mm -hmm. I walked out into the commons because I'm still an old school pastor and I was shaking hands and a man he had a picture, his eyes were welled up red, and he said, Pastor, this is my prodigal. Will you pray for him? I said, sir, we absolutely will. And the next few services, I said, this is so-and-so's prodigal. By the end of the weekend, I had little torn off pieces of paper, 
pray for mine, preacher, wow. pray for mine, pastor, wow. pray for mine. And I, I think the, the pressure is real, mm -hmm. but I always want to encourage people today, hope is not lost because I, I do believe that no matter what generation it is, they're always looking to a generation ahead of them to love them, to encourage them, to serve them. I, I gave the book to a group of single moms recently, just said, hey, I want to invest in your sons. Uh, and so grandmothers, awesome. just, just an investment to say, hey, look at this, you can, you can win I in, love in that. life. You know, that, that's interesting because a lot of times we say, yeah, we'll pray. And I'm not, I mean, for one second, diminishing the power of prayer, I believe in it. But there can be a feeling of helplessness. Yes. Like, you know, I mean, I prayed, I feel like I should do more. What do, you, what do you tell those parents and grandparents with that prodigal that are struggling with that? They're praying, they're praying yes. fervently and they're believing, yes. but they feel like maybe I should do more. Yeah, I, I think it's a normal feeling. I mean, the, can you imagine what the father and the prodigal yeah. son while he waited and what we really learn a lot of times when we have a prodigal or we have a maybe a spouse or a friend or a brother or a sister, yeah. What we learn is, is, is we can't control people. We can't make them. I mean, we, we have a world that we're pretty in control. And then we realize that we're just totally dependent on them having an encounter with God yeah. and, and them having that moment. But I will say those prayers, God hears them. Because Luke 15, where the prodigal son is, talks about a lost sheep, a lost coin, and a lost son. In the Bible, repetition equal emphasis. So what Jesus is saying to us, you'll never love them more than I love them. Mm -hmm. I see them right now yeah. where they're at. Jeff, as a pastor, I was wondering, I mean, there's moms watching and there's fathers, there's, you know, kids. Would you take a moment and maybe just pray for our audience? I would, I would love to. I, I know that, that right now there's somebody out there, maybe you're praying for your prodigal and I want you to know I join with you. and. And, and maybe you're there and you're, you're just thinking a little bit about your legacy and you might feel like legacy, that's a word for someone that's really important or has a lot of resources or maybe, or maybe you have a lot of trophies, a lot of things, but you're like, I, I haven't made a deposit in the areas that matter. Lord, I just pray right now for that person. Lord, I, I pray you're, you're listening. And, and, and you're out there saying, I, I want to I wanna win at what matters. And, and Lord, I pray right now that you would encourage, that, that you would strengthen, that, that, that there wouldn't be a, a, a chaos in their mind of a, a thousand thoughts and a thousand things, but you by the whisper of your spirit, maybe to take that child that's struggling or that grandchild out uh, for a dinner and just say, I want you to know I'm proud of you. I love you. I believe in you. Send a text, send a note. Tell your children how much you love them. Maybe write them a letter, even though it seems like it's broken and, and it's not repairable. Write a letter. And Lord, I join with the prayers of every grandparent, every parent right now. And we know you hear us and you're moving beyond what we can comprehend in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Yeah. You know, there's a lot of um, grandparents and mothers around the world and their prayer right now on the ground at this moment is, God, can you hear my prayers? Because my child has an empty tummy and I don't know where any help is coming today or tomorrow or the next day. And we have this glorious opportunity here at Life to be an answer to those prayers and reach out. You've done it before and we thank you. But I'm asking you, would you do it again? Please watch this. Mandalina is weary. For years, she has battled an enemy that thrives in the environment she calls home. Despite her most desperate efforts to protect them, five of her children have lost their lives. The most recent victim in her home was her four-year-old daughter, a dearly loved girl whose greatest joy was helping her mother. 
Mandalina clings to those memories, even as her grief threatens to overtake her. In the face of such a relentless enemy, Mandalina continues to fight, all the while caring for her children who have fallen ill because of malnutrition again and again and again. This shadow of death has loomed over Mandalina's family and so many others like them for far too long. With your help, we can provide a daily bowl of food for all the children in Mandalina's village. The darkness can be rolled away and a bright future can be revealed. To lose a child is an unimaginable tragedy. To lose a child because of hunger is obscene in this world. To think that you'd have to lose, bury a four-year-old girl because you have slowly watched her disappear a little bit more every single day and you're doing everything at your disposal. I mean, think about how it was with your children. I know that as a mom, if there was anything wrong with my son, I mean, I would have, I would have done whatever to get the help he needed at the time he needed to restore him to, to health. These mothers, like Magdalena, they're exactly the same as you and I. They love their children. They want their children to grow up to be healthy and strong, and they want to set a different legacy than the legacy that was handed to them, but they can't do it by themselves. We want you to be able to get hold of Jeff's book, and we're gonna make that available to you today, but I want you to help us, just as we want you to win in your walk, in your relationship with Christ, with your family. We want to stand beside these moms and say, you are not alone. As long as we, as the body of Christ, are on the planet at this time, you are not alone. And we are coming with real, tangible, practical help, Randy. Absolutely. I find it interesting that Jesus came into the world as the light of the world. But by the time he left, he was looking at his followers and saying, you are the light of the world. And I think he says that to you today as a, as a follower of Christ, you are the light of the world. And what does a light do? It dispels the darkness. And that mother that is facing the darkness, all those mothers that are facing the darkness of losing children, sometimes over and over. And you wonder, why do they keep having children? That's, that's all they have. That's their future. That's, that's everything to them. Let's be that light in their darkness. That's, I think that's what the church is here to do. I mean, I, I support all the great things that we do in our, in our communities and the activities and sort of the things that Sheila and I do. I mean, that's all wonderful, but my goodness, if we can't be that light in the darkest place, whew, I just think maybe we're not doing everything we should, but I know you are. You guys have helped us for years now, decades now, to be that light in the darkest place by going in with that, that little bowl uh, we're, we're sort of that orange light out there in the dark places because you can see that, that bowl from, from so, so far. And I love it because you know what it says? It says we care. It says we see you. We feel your pain and we come in Jesus' name and we bring you food. So will you do that today? Will you fill that bowl? Will you, will you help us put that, that soup mix into the bowl to give to these children? to get them through this difficult time, I'm asking you to do it. Make the best gift you can. Remember, $50 right now will help feed five children for the next three months. How do we do that? Well, we've been doing it a long time. We got people and processes on the ground in place ready to go. We just need you to partner with us. If you can make that $1,000 gift, that's 100 children for the next three months. Whatever you can do, let's just be that light. Together, we can really shine into the darkest places with the love of Christ. Go online or go to the phone and do it now. Across the continent of Africa, children are suffering, facing severe malnutrition and even death. With food reserves gone and many areas experiencing severe famine, we urgently need to replenish supplies to keep feeding the 350,000 children who are counting on us. 
Through life's mission feeding outreach, your gift of love can be an answer to prayer for a hurting and hungry child in their time of need. Call now with your life-saving gift of $30, $50, or $100 to help feed and care for three, five, or ten children for three full months. With your gift of any amount, we'll send you the chosen 40 Days with Jesus. From the creators of the widely popular television drama, The Chosen, this devotional invites you to discover Jesus through the eyes of those who knew Him best. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the Amazing Grace Sheet Music Frame Wall Art. This timeless and well-beloved hymn can be displayed as a reminder of God's grace to you. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our inspiring bronze sculpture, Let the Children Come. This beautiful bronze is a reminder to care for children around the world in both word and deed. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. Thank you so much. And remember, for any gift at all, say, I would like Jeff's book, The Way to Win, and we will gladly send that to you. Absolutely. Jeff, man, we appreciate you sharing your thoughts today, your insight today, and, and helping people to win. Exactly. Well, it's been a privilege to be here with you, and I, I do so honor and respect uh, those that have continued to serve and be a part of what happens here at Life Outreach. We're, we're really long-term family and friends yeah. of Life Outreach. But I just want to say to maybe someone listening who feels like maybe you've won at the wrong things or maybe you're losing that you can actually win in, in some areas of your life. And, and I just want to encourage you to not give up and to lean in because God has for you some places to win that He can really help you with your family, with your relationships, with his kingdom. Amen, amen. Be encouraged today and come back every day for more life today. We'll see you next time. Bye. Planning your future, keep their future in mind. Contact Life Planning Services today. I, I've never told her that my boss wanted me to end her life. Abby Johnson, tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.